Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 7, Infectious Disease. This is video number 6, and we're going to have a bit of a talk about some of Pasteur's experiments. So what we're trying to do in this particular video is to give you a bit of an idea about some of the work of, well, Robert Koch we talked about previously, and Louis Pasteur, to basically explain causes and transmission of infectious diseases. And in this particular video, we're going to be focusing on Pasteur's experiments on microbial contamination. So the three levels for you to have a look at are firstly, can you describe what microbial contamination is? Can you discuss at least one of Pasteur's experiments? And perhaps you might be able to evaluate Pasteur's contribution to the science of microbiology. So who was Louis Pasteur? Well, Pasteur was a physicist and a chemist, not a microbiologist biologist, but he was asked to investigate what was souring alcohol fermented from beet juice. So this was a uh, chemical problem, I guess, in one sense, but it led to a very important biological understanding. What Pasteur did was to identify microbial life forms uh, linked with the process of fermentation. And we now know fermentation is a form of an aerobic respiration. And this process is carried out by a number of different types of microorganisms, but they weren't easy to see. And around the time that Pasteur was working, we were getting some development in the ability of microscopes to be able to resolve small images. And Pasteur conducted a few different types of experiments, which we'll see as we go through, to get a sense of the actual fact that certain types of materials could be contaminated by microbes, that, that concept of microbial contamination. What he identified was specific types of fungi, yeast, that live on the beet sugar and they produced alcohol as a byproduct of their respiration process. Bacteria produce lactic acid as a result of their metabolism. So he was able to identify two very important chemical compounds produced through the anaerobic respiration of different types of microbes as they carried out respiration on the sugars present in different types of plant material. Being a good scientist, he conducted experiments to try and test his ideas. And one of the things that he did notice was that if you had uh, sugars, but you didn't have yeast, you didn't get alcohol. So sugars don't naturally break down into uh, alcohol. They need to be fermented in order for that to happen. So something needs to, to be responsible for doing that. He also identified a particular type of bacterium, a rod-shaped bacterium, and that bacilli uh, part of the lactobacillus name tells you that it's rod-shaped. And it was responsible for producing, for producing lactic acid when it was introduced into the sugar. So he was able to look at what happens to sugar solutions uh, acting as controls, and then how those solutions changed through the introduction of particular microbes. His understanding of the fact that microbes or microorganisms can actually get into and contaminate uh, important foodstuffs, particularly liquid foods like wine or milk, uh, led to the process that actually bears his name, which is the process of pasteurization. And that process of pasteurization is basically the process of raising the temperature of important liquid foods like wine or like milk uh, in order to kill the microbes that may be present in those foods. So that's the process of pasteurization. And now we know that most uh, of those sorts of foods will have pasteurized written on them if they've undergone that process of raising uh, the temperature in order for the microbes to be killed off. Now Pasteur did a lot of experiments and it's important that we look at a few of these in the class, but he also um, was investigating silkworm diseases. And in his investigation of silkworm diseases, he actually found another very important thing about microbial contamination. He found that germs or microorganisms could spread through the air and also through contact, either from clothing or from hands, from one host to another, or one person to another. So this idea of transmission 
of microorganisms was also a very important fundamental of the work that Pasteur did. He also developed these two terms that I've used, well, one of the terms that I've used, anaerobic and aerobic, from his observation of microorganisms, how they interact with uh, sugar solutions and carry out their life processes, particularly respiration. So we have him to thank for these terms that we use to describe the presence or absence of oxygen, particularly in relation to the process of respiration. But of all of the experiments that Pasteur did, probably the most significant one involved the um, disproving of the theory of spontaneous generation. Now, spontaneous generation was a long-held belief, and it's one of these ideas that in our sophisticated 21st century we think is just silly, um, but was very strongly held view at the time. And that was that life arose from non-living material. So if you left meat out, then it would suddenly start to grow maggots, that sort of thing. Now we know that there are life cycles associated with flies laying eggs, the eggs hatch, they produce maggots, and that's where that comes from. And if you don't look after your food, if you don't um, refrigerate it or freeze it or uh, uh, cook it properly, then you're going to run the risk that it's going to be contaminated with some sort of living organism, often a microorganism. But at the time, people didn't believe that. People felt that you couldn't, that there wasn't anything in there, they couldn't see anything in there, and therefore this life that, that uh, was uh, created just came from nothing. Well, Louis Pasteur's swan-necked flask experiment, and this is often what it uh, goes by, was the experiment that he used to disprove this theory of spontaneous generation. So what he did was he boiled flasks. Basically, the swan neck is a flask where he had a nice little curve in the flask. So you can imagine something that looks roughly like this uh, with some broth sitting uh, in that flask. And so you can do that just by bending some tubing uh, in order to separate basically that, that flask from the air. So the broth was in here, and what he did was he boiled the broth, which he knew was part of his pasteurization process to kill off any of the microorganisms. And he found that in these swan neck flasks, the broth did not become contaminated. But if he broke them, you can sort of see a little one over here in, our, in my little backdrop. Uh, but if he broke them, then there was an opportunity for microorganisms to enter the flask. And then he found that the broth became contaminated. That is, the presence of microorganisms were now in the broth. So he, he reasoned that there must be um, certain types of microorganisms that are too small to see that are circulating everywhere and that are able to land on particular types of food or into solutions uh, and will therefore contaminate those solutions. And he um, coined this germ theory of disease, that is disease caused by particular microorganisms. Louis Pasteur did a lot of experiments and he um, achieved a great deal in terms of furthering our understanding of not just microbial contamination, but some very important processes that we now use to help protect us from some of the microbes that may infect uh, food products. He's well worth having a look at and we'll do a little bit more study of him in class. Thanks for watching.